The world's hunger for more and more energy, vital to so much in our daily lives, is growing fast. And it is a demand that is set to persist due to population growth and economic development, which is giving more people access to energy, lifting them out of poverty so they benefit from a better standard of living. Meeting this energy demand is a serious challenge and will require all sources of energy. Fossil fuels will continue to meet the bulk of this demand, but this creates another challenge. When used to provide energy, fossil fuels produce CO2, which is warming the Earth's atmosphere. So how can we meet the demand for more energy and at the same time reduce CO2 emissions and avoid the worst effects of climate change? The principal cause of climate change is the increase in carbon dioxide concentrations in the atmosphere and the principal cause of that is the burning of fossil fuels. If we were to burn all the world's known resources of fossil fuels, the concentration of CO2 in the atmosphere would go up enormously and we would be committed to dangerous climate change. Climate change is becoming a serious, serious threat and we have to deploy technologies that can accelerate how we deal with the problem. There's no silver bullet for solving both the world's energy challenge and the challenge of reducing CO2 emissions. We're going to need all the solutions to that energy challenge and we're going to need all the solutions in terms of how do we reduce the world's CO2 emissions. Around one third of all CO2 emissions from the energy industry come from electricity generation. So it makes sense to focus on this area first. Natural gas has a vital role to play in cleaner power generation. Natural gas power plants emit around half the CO2 of coal plants, from fuel extraction to electricity generation. Displacing coal-fired power with natural gas is for many countries the fastest and cheapest route to meet CO2 emissions reduction targets. Around 17% of global CO2 emissions from fossil fuels come from road transport. And the number of cars on the road is expected to triple by 2050. Hybrid, electric and hydrogen vehicles will become more common over the coming years. But most cars and trucks will continue to use petrol and diesel. But for now, along with vehicle technology improvements, the use of sustainable biofuels offers the most practical commercial way to reduce CO2 emissions from our roads over the next 20 years. More natural gas and biofuels can help cut CO2 emissions today. Looking ahead, a technology which has huge potential to reduce CO2 emissions is carbon capture and storage, or CCS. Many believe CCS has a critical role to play in reducing CO2 emissions, since it captures CO2 from burning fossil fuels. But what is carbon capture and storage? It's where you take a power station that's burning, say, coal or natural gas, or an industrial plant that produces a lot of carbon dioxide, use chemical processes to separate out the CO2 from the exhaust stream of your factory or power station. You then transport it and inject it deep underground. Say you have a smokestack uh, coming out of a power plant or, or a chemical factory or a refinery. And uh, the idea is that you separate the carbon dioxide from the other gases that are coming out. And the way we do that is we uh, take uh, basically liquid that uh, is really good at absorbing carbon dioxide. And then you can put it into pipelines and then you can transport it. And then finally you go to a place where you've got a well and that you then um, start to pump it underground and that you put it into a formation that is a porous rock. CCS can be used across a wide range of industries to capture CO2 from power plants, as well as energy-intensive sectors like cement, iron and steel, and chemicals manufacturing. What I have here is a piece of rock, a piece of sandstone rock. We will store the CO2 about a kilometre underground in rock like this. We're not storing CO2 in vast caverns from which the CO2 might suddenly and catastrophically escape. CO2 is everywhere in the air. 
it's essential to all living things. It's part of our basic metabolic system. So from that perspective, is it poisonous? Well, no, of course not, because it's everywhere around. The technology for CCS has been used and demonstrated in the oil and gas industry for decades. And we're working with academia and with governments to make sure that that knowledge gets shared in order to help progress CCS. However, like other new technologies, CCS requires significant investment to move through the demonstration phase and to be more widely adopted. Government funds and support are vital. The International Energy Agency has forecast a need for over 3,000 CCS projects by 2050 at a cost of around 5 trillion US dollars. That sounds like a lot of money, but would represent only 6% of the overall investment needed to achieve a 50% reduction in CO2 emissions by 2050. If CCS is supported to realize its potential, it could be responsible for capturing as much as one-fifth of all CO2 emissions in 2050. So it offers remarkable value for money. What's more, without CCS, a huge burden would fall on other low-carbon technologies. Without CCS, spending on other measures to stop CO2 emissions would need to increase by 70%. The developed world needs to take the lead in supporting CCS in the next decade. And through international collaboration and financing, help it to spread to developing countries. Like all new technologies, we have to scale up, we have to demonstrate on a large scale. CCS is available to us today, but it has not been done in large commercial scale. And seeing is believing. If we want the rest of the society to believe that CCS can deliver, then we must also see it happen. That is why the demonstration projects are so crucial in the stage we're at right now. Shell is participating in a number of the world's leading CCS projects. We've been a key member of the project that is building the world's largest CCS project in Australia. We're part of the team that brought the world's largest carbon capture research facility on stream in Norway. And we've announced plans to build the world's first carbon capture and storage project connected with oil sands in Canada. For too long, we've had debates and reports about carbon capture and storage. Um, we've seen some successes in the oil and the gas industry, but we have yet to see it at scale in the power generation sector. Um, that's the key challenge. And this is where we need industry and government and the broader community to be working together to fast track the deployment at commercial scale of these technologies. Carbon capture and storage is absolutely essential. If we cannot get carbon capture and storage to work, and if we do not implement it in a major way, very rapidly, then the world will be committed to dangerous climate change. 